Well, it seems like somebody read the bulletin today and someone didn't. I see a lot of black holes out there. We got to fire it up with the Holy Spirit in this church. I wanted you to wear red. I love this tradition of wearing red. I picked it up from our old parish up in St. Mary's. Um, it's a great sign that you, you're, you are showing the, f the flames of the Holy Spirit, which came down on the apostles, and you, you show that by uh, wearing red and orange and fuchsia and other little colors close to red. Some people got lucky. They wore their fuchsia shirt. Oh, it looks it's kind of red, Father. But more so, I wanted, to, I wanted everyone to come to Mass today mindful of what we're doing. We're celebrating the coming of the Holy Spirit on the church. This, this moment in the church where it's launched out into the world to bring everyone to salvation in Jesus Christ. So when, so when you thought this morning, I got to wear red, oh, it's Pentecost, you know, and you, know, you, you get charged up for Mass. That's what I wanted. So maybe we have to have theme colors for every week, huh? maybe. Green for ordinary time. Who's got a green shirt anyway? No one's got a green shirt. <clears throat> but the neat thing is, uh, you know, red is, is, is this symbol. The vestments I wear are red uh, as symbol of the Holy Spirit's fire that comes to us. But I, I, I got a comment from one person who said, I wore a blue shirt, Father. I said, blue? Yeah, you ever, you ever see a tight blue flame, you know, one of those blow torches? When it gets real blue, it's, that's when it's really hot. Okay, I'll give you that one. That's fine. You're thinking about it at least. So I don't know if anyone has heard lately about a thing called the Enlightenment of Consciences. Enlightenment of Consciences. It's a, it's a term that's been uh, used in the Blessed Mother's appearances around the world, especially at Garamandal where she appeared to four young girls and said there will be a time when God will enlighten our consciences to be able to see ourselves as we really are before God and see sin for what it is. Kind of, it's going to be a, out of the mercy of God. It's totally out of the mercy of God that he's, he's allowing us to see how we really are. The whole, everyone, everyone in the world, this, this is the promise of the Blessed Mother. It'll be, the world will stop for 15 minutes. Everyone will be able to think about their sins. And then repent and then come back to God, of course. It's, it's a movement of God, I think, if it, if it happens. I don't know if it's going to happen. Uh, but if, it's a movement of God in his mercy to show us. That we're, we're, we're on the wrong track. Look at our world today. We are, we are going the wrong direction. Just think that we're, we're killing innocent babies in the womb. And we're, we're doing uh, surgery on, on children to change their gender. It's, it's, it's a wild mixed up world. And it's almost, we're almost too far gone that God's going to have to step in and, with his mercy and show us the way. But I, I reflected on this, and I thought that might be an easy way out. Although, if you think about it, many people will be confronted with their, their position before God, and they'll still reject God. They still won't repent. That's the sad part. But I, I really think, though, because we have the Holy Spirit in us, in our church, you know, everyone was baptized. They received the Holy Spirit. You're made new. You're a new creation when you're baptized. And then when you're confirmed, you get this fullness of the Spirit on you. You're sealed and you're launched on a mission. So everyone's got the ability to have an enlightenment of conscience. Everyone, if you're plugged into the Holy Spirit, as you should be, he can enlighten your mind. That should be a prayer you make every day. Holy Spirit, enlighten my mind. Help me to know my faults. Help me to, help me to see myself as I truly am before God. Help me to repent then and come back to God. So, so we have that power to do that. God gave us the spirit, his very, his very self into our souls. And we live and move and have our being in God through the Holy Spirit. So we have to do this every day. You make an examination of conscience, that's what you're doing. You're, you're reminding yourself of who you are before God and, and you're seeing yourself in the true light of what you're doing and you're trying your best to, to correct that and, and propose a, a, the new life you've been given in baptism. You know, I, I've uh, been a priest for 15 years now. Uh, well, next Thursday, May 23rd, will be my 15th anniversary. 
Of course, that, I, I said that the last man, 15 is nothing. You know, wait till I'm 25 at least to have a little party. But you can have a party if you want. I don't care. So. <laughs> and, and, and so this year also in October, October 9th, by the way, I turned 60 years old. October 9th. Just wanted to make sure you know that. <laughs> I turned 60 years old. 60. It's crazy. So I, I, and I, this last week, I took a few days off. I went up back to my hometown of Minster and just hung out with family and, and enjoyed, uh, enjoyed a drumstick every day from the Tasty Freeze, which is, uh, if you know that place, you'll, you'll get a drumstick. They're, they're the best. And, uh, you know, a lot of front porch action, just sitting around with family. And I got to reflect a lot this week of where I am in my life. And I came to some cl- conclusions that I'm not going to sin anymore. I'm not going to sin anymore. Of course, the next day, I made this great revolution. The next day, I did something I shouldn't have done, you know. But that's what we have to do. We have to shoot for holiness in the Holy Spirit. Sainthood. you got to want to be a saint. Does everyone in this room want to really want to be a saint? It's something that should attract you, but it, somehow it doesn't, though. Are you, are you, are you totally uh, oriented toward heaven? Because in the end, it's, it's, it's all about heaven and hell, our eternal destination. This world, we're passing through this world. It's a, it's a test for the next. How are we doing? How are you doing? You in the back of church there. How are you doing back there? Or are you out in the cry room, hiding in the cry room? Look at your life. Move in the Holy Spirit. Let the Spirit move in you and, and be enlightened. Enlightened, which is light shown on yourself. Sometimes that's not good. When you're in the light, you're like, oh, my gosh, I look terrible. But we have, to, we have to see ourselves as we truly are before God because that's the way we're going to be when we get to heaven. You're at the pearly gates, and you're going to be just yourself there. Your untarnished self and all, with all you've done or not done. And you'll be judged. So, so right now, ask the Holy Spirit, Come into your heart. Oh, he's there just to, to, to awaken him in, his, in your heart. Awaken yourself to him. Turn on the lights of your soul. And, and really reflect where I am, where I am, I with, am I with God? Where am I in my spiritual life, my, my real life? How am I acting? Am I giving God the first place in my life? Do I come to Mass forgetful of what I'm doing, routinely come to Mass? Or do I, did I put on red because I wanted to come to church today? you got to ask yourself, every person in this room has to ask themselves that. Thank God you're here so you can, I can tell you this. I want to tell everyone in the whole community the same thing. So through you, you got to get out there and tell the people who aren't in church, where are, where are you in your life with God? You have to be an apostle to them. You're sent. You have a mission in the Holy Spirit. To bring that person, that friend, that neighbor, that, that family member to God. That's your mission. Do you know this? Everyone in this room has that mission. And if, if, if we're 500 people here, we'll reach 10,000 people probably. Let's do that. Let's bring the message of Christ to every person. Let them see themselves in the light of the Holy Spirit. So we have to do that first. So I want, I want you to, especially after I sit down, we're going to leave a, leave a short time of silence for you to reflect, say, Lord, where am I with you? And then re-engage yourself. Awaken, that, awaken yourself to the Holy Spirit present in your soul. Don't waste this moment of grace. Don't waste this moment of grace right now. This could be the moment that changes your life. Yes, it can be the moment that changes your whole life. You don't have to just have a routine mass and just go to breakfast afterwards. It's all you're thinking about now, right? That cup of coffee you're going to get. I know, I know I, I'm the same as you. I know, what you're ta- I know what you're talking about. Right now, respond to the Holy Spirit who is in your heart. So let's do that. Let's, let's take a moment of silence. And let's pray for each other too. And pray that we have the courage to, to face what we'll see when we face God face to face. Let's, let's make a great effort today. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle them the fire of your love. Lord, you send out your spirit and they are created 
and you renew the face of the earth. Renew this earth, Lord. Renew our lives in the Holy Spirit. Put the fire of your love in our hearts. Lord, I beg you, I beg you, for each person in this room, in this room to have an encounter with the Holy Spirit today and to come closer to God, our loving Father.